Here are five data-driven lessons about language learning based on 450,000 total note card reviews and how to put them into practice. If I know the meaning of a word in my target language based on a gut reaction, I not only feel like I know the word better, I actually do. Based on note card reviews, if I know the meaning of a word within about two and a half seconds, I have a 95% chance of getting that word right, but that number drops the longer it takes me to answer. Language happens in real time, so you know how frustrating it is if it takes your mind just those few extra seconds to either understand something or find that word in your target language. The good news is that you can train your mind for this in both your immersion and your studying. As you watch, listen, write, speak, or review note cards, aim to understand and express things as intuitively as you can. And if you can't, spend more time with that word or that topic or re-watch that video that was giving you a hard time. In terms of numbers for Anki and note card reviews, if you can't remember the meaning of that word in about two or three seconds, hit again. In short, work to build your automaticity and your intuition in your target language rather than struggling to find or understand meaning. In English, how do you explain the difference between to happen versus to occur versus to take place? Now try and do that in a target language that you're just starting out in. When viewing that jumble of a map, you see that in relation to one another, those are hard words. And those hard words, called leeches in the world of Anki, literally suck up your time. These are words that for some reason, no matter how many times you review them, you find them confusing or difficult to pin down. In my case for German, these words are only 6% of my total cards, but they account for 19% of the time that I spend reviewing vocab. Which means that these difficult words take up three times longer than a well-designed vocab card. Put another way, I've reviewed most of my 10,000 cards around 15 times each. But for these leeches, it's an average of 46 reviews. Looking at the list of words that's difficult for me, I see that they fall into two general categories. First, similar meanings to other cards that I have, like to happen versus to occur versus to take place. And second, similar sounding words. For example, in German, you have Strauch, Streich, Streichen, and Stauchen. Here's the fix for these words. Improve your understanding through specificity and context. Start by searching for 10 example sentences with each of these words and reading each of those sentences out loud five times. That could also mean having multiple definitions for each of your note cards, but having one that you consider primary. And it should also mean adding example sentences and probably including a picture from Google. And before we continue, please consider subscribing and leave a comment with one tricky word that you found in your target language. My wife and I had a conversation where she pointed out that our son, who's beginning to speak, mostly uses nouns to refer to things. Food, the moon, and trees. He doesn't use adjectives that often, it's usually green or blue, and like most other kids, he's getting to verbs last. My son's pattern matches my data for language learning. When it comes to those difficult words we were just discussing, verbs have the highest likelihood to be a leech, followed by adjectives. This totally makes sense because a larger proportion of nouns correspond to some tangible thing in the real world, which is less often the case for adjectives and even less often the case for verbs. This is probably also tied to the fact that you have more similar verbs like we discussed before and the fact that adjectives are almost always tied to a noun. Verbs are also more confusing because they have many forms like past, present, future, first person versus second person, and groups versus individuals. And in my case for German, adjectives are a little bit more tricky because they can change form based on the noun they describe or the sentence structure that they're within. So what to do? First, the advantage that nouns provide is that they're often tangible and physical things. We can translate those features over to the process of learning adjectives and verbs by making those as immersive as possible so you can really feel and sense as you're learning. Tie each word to a visual and act things out if you can. And consider making a more concerted effort to use verbs in context, in conversation, in writing as you're first learning them. And in addition to making Anki note cards for individual words, consider making sentence cards in a conversational deck so that you can practice things in context. Pick challenges and experiments for yourself. Take two weeks, assess, recalibrate, and repeat. I don't mean brainstorming or thinking about what you would do, I mean roll up your sleeves and actually do something for a set period of time. Trying something out is not a commitment, and you'll be surprised how much you can learn from something even if you don't continue with it. For example, about a year into learning German, I wanted to improve my speaking skills, so I created an Anki deck with an English sentence on one side, and on the other side I had to figure out a way to say what I wanted in German. 
As I learned what I could and could not say in German, I found that there were certain structures in the language that I wanted to reinforce in my head. And now, a year and a half later, the experiment is still going on. For this experiment, I've taken what I find to be the interesting parts of three different grammar books and turned those into Anki cards. I wouldn't have had that growth if I had just tried to predict what would happen and then said, eh, no thanks. I realize that students may not have the luxury or the flexibility to experiment when it comes to semester assignments and finals, but the point still does stand. Find ways to experiment, stay engaged, and look for breakthroughs in your target language. Quick side note, please do leave a comment with any 30-day challenge ideas that have worked for you in the past or gotten you excited. I'm always on the search for new ideas. Here's my daily hourly breakdown for the 450,000 language learning note cards that I've reviewed. And this is aside from the reading, podcasts, and YouTube I enjoy throughout the day. While I very often do my reviews early in the morning, I've also reviewed tens of thousands of cards while on a lunch break or after a long day of work. And while this pattern has changed, I've worked a full-time job, had a baby, and moved between cities since starting to learn German. I share this data because if you're telling me that you don't have 20 minutes spread throughout your day to spend with your target language, then you're either lying or you need to admit that language learning is not a priority for you, which is okay. If you have a commute or there are chores to do, there's a podcast you can listen to. If you're already going to go on social media or check the news, you can do that in your target language. If you know that you want to go out for drinks or hang out with friends, find a language meetup in your city. You may not have a 30 minute or one hour chunk that you can dedicate to language learning every day, but you do have five minute breaks that you can spend with your target language. So don't say you don't have any time to enjoy something in your target language or time to review note cards. And that's it. Leave a comment if there's a similar data exploration you'd want me to make on language learning and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. And I'll see you in the next one.